Eighty years ago, the first Tacoma Narrows Bridge, being named Galloping Gurney, fell into the waters of the Puget Sound on November 7, 1940, at wind speeds as high as 38 miles per hour, resulting in a significant engineering failure as a result of poor decisions and the failures of big government made at the time that could still awe and disbelief that this really happened. While the narrow crossing from the Tacoma City limits into the Kitsap Peninsula near Gate Harbor has been replaced with two other bridges that have withstood hurricane force winds and earthquakes for 70 years, the initial span, built as the third largest suspension bridge in the world at the time, now rests in the depths of a very rapid waterway in the Puget Sound as the largest man-made barrier reef in the world and is protected as a historical monument. During the 50th anniversary of the original bridge, talks were underway about creating a third bridge as the second four-lane bridge built to replace Galloping Gertie, known as Sturdy Gertie, was reaching its capacities of daily traffic flow and required an additional solution due to population increases within the area. In July of 2007, the third Tacoma Narrows Bridge, called Greedy Gertie, from the results of the tolls collected, was open to handle the traffic from the peninsula into Tacoma, while Sturdy Gertie would handle the traffic from Tacoma to the peninsula, providing bike lanes and better pedestrian access across the sound on the newly constructed bridge. This video focuses on all three bridges, including footage from Gritty Gertie, from its construction, grand opening, and the first year it was in use. While many suspension bridges were constructed during the Depression era that are still standing today, the lessons of what happened to Galloping Gertie helped in the design of even bigger bridges that were built after World War II, including the Mackinac and Verrazano bridges that dwarf in size of these two bridges that cross the Puget Sound today. The need to span the Narrows was important to the area, connecting McCord Air Base, Camp Lewis, and Bremerton Naval Shipyard, as our country saw the need to construct better transportation between military bases and other government installations as America was on the way to being in a major global conflict. Many business leaders had come a lobby to get a span built since 1920, but were stopped due to funding as well as purchasing the contract for the private ferry system from Titlow Beach to the Olympic Peninsula in operation at the time. The funding for Galloping Gertie was from the PWA, one of FDR's alphabet soup programs created during the Depression that was running out of funding due to other bridges built in San Francisco and New York, creating bridges that could handle more traffic and could handle weather conditions with trusses supporting the roadbed and steel that had openings on the sides to let the air flow across the span. When it came to building the first span, many corners were cut using cheaper steel and the elimination of a better support system below the roadbed. The bridge was built with only two lanes for traffic with no room for expansion. Just before World War II started, there were a few bridges built in similar design that still stand today after necessary modifications. The Lions Gate Bridge in Vancouver, BC is an example, but with the narrow roadbed and the, on the original bridge, even if the roadbed were removed, it would be too dangerous to support a third reversible lane. Even the original Lake Washington floating bridge was designed with four lanes of traffic. This bridge opened the same year, but like Galpin Gertie, it would end up in Lake Washington 50 years later from construction errors. Many have seen the footage of the original bridge taken by Barney Elliott, owner of the camera shop that existed on Pacific Avenue in downtown Tacoma for several years. The footage was shot using newly released 16mm Kodachrome color film. One interesting fact about the film footage is that the color film was recorded with fewer frames per second resulting in the black and white footage copies twisting and moving faster than the original 16 frame per second recording. Within recent years, another film surfaced that is now in the hands of Gig Harbor Historical Society taken on the peninsula side of the bridge. This footage, recorded at a higher elevation, shows the roadway falling into the sound resulting in a different view that appears as if a shockwave hit the roadbed before being separated from the support cables. One theory about how the roadbed started to separate from the cables occurred in the center section of the bridge, where the suspended cable reaches the lowest connection to the roadbed. The design of how it connects and supports the current bridge is better enforced using steel plated and additional bolts while the original bridge uses a support cable connected to the side girders. After carefully watching Barney's video, there are some frames where snap cables can be seen from the center section of the bridge, but it is difficult to be certain that is noticeable in the film 
was taken before the bridge fell shows construction between the approaches and the towers. This was a cable support system designed to keep that part of the bridge from moving up and down. These supports were anchored to some massive concrete blocks. One of the concrete blocks was visible for several years. On the Tacoma side of the bridge, this concrete block was next to the railway tracks until removed in recent years. If you have taken the Amtrak Cascades or Coast Starlight train, this massive concrete block was visible when approaching the bridge. The concrete block on the peninsula side was in the sound itself. It may remain in the sound or could have been removed when the other two bridges were constructed. Many of the ideas to fix the bridge movement were tested by Professor Frederick Burt Farquharson, an engineering professor at the University of Washington, who created a scale model of the bridge and tested it in a wind tunnel. Five days later, before the bridge fell, Professor Farquharson presented to the state the following options to fix the bridge. Drilling holes in the side girders, attaching fair lanes to the side girders to divert the wind, and unfortunately the bridge fell before these options could be used. After the bridge collapsed, several bridge designs, including the Bronx Whitestone Bridge in New York and the Lionsgate Bridge, were retrofitted with additional side girders, with added additional weight to the bridges and eliminating pedestrian access. It would not be until the 21st century that these bridges would have new decks, eliminating the heavy girders and adding, adding fair lanes to keep the steel look to prevent aeroelastic fluttering. While the shoreline on the peninsula side has been open to the public, many beachcombers have strolled the section of Puget Sound to see the sea life as it passes through the rapid currents. But beneath where the two bridges exist, the rubble of Galloping Gertie's roadbed rests on the shoreline and up on the hillside below Sturdy Gertie. When the bridge broke, the Washington State Department of Transportation had a plan to rebuild another bridge using the existing steel and quickly remove the heavy concrete roadbeds from the remains. The pieces were jackhammered and discarded onto the shores below, resting where they have been for 80 years. The close-up shows the rusted rebar that is only the diameter of a number two pencil constructed in a way that was very different from the rebar that was used for the I-90 construction bridge during the 1980s that was thicker and coated with plastic. Green paint marks are found over the former roadbed as well. It is not clear as to which bridge this paint is from since all three bridges used the similar green paint scheme. As a result of this failure, bridges are now tested in wind tunnels. Many of Professor Farquharson's discoveries have been used on current suspension bridges all over the world with the sleek look that Leon Moisef used in the design of Galloping Gertie.